Good afternoon and welcome to another reading vlog. I have been reading more of Wolf Speaker since the last time that we spoke. Um, please ignore the children in the background. I can't keep them quiet on the weekends for the life of me. Uh, going well with this one so far, about halfway through. Um, one of the things that I did notice when rereading through this one that apparently I missed when rereading through Wild Magic and apparently has not occurred to me in the about 20 years of rereading these books is that um, the description of Nemer, Dane's teacher, says he has dark skin. I picked up on the black hair but for some reason the dark skin had somehow not registered in my brain and to be fair I have read the Immortals Quartet, the four books with Dane in them, I don't even know how many times now and I've also got Tempest and Slaughter, which is the book where Numair is the main character. And I mean, I know that he came from, or that he um, grew up and sort of went to university in Kartak, which is the, um, it's described, I think, more like maybe Egypt or something. I'm not really sure where the reference for it comes from, but I mean, it, it's definitely a hotter, drier place where you'd expect people with darker skin and, and black hair. Why? Why has this not registered with me? 20 years! 20 years! I mean, I'm not very good at picturing things in my head regardless, but come on! Anyway, it's going well. Um, I can't picture many of the other characters and because I haven't been able to read this one in so long because I haven't had a copy, um, I feel like I don't have very set pictures in my mind of a lot of the other characters. So that's interesting. I mean, I feel with the other Tomorrow Pierce books anyway that I've been sort of updating the descriptions and the, the way I sort of imagine characters as I go along, especially now that I'm a bit older and obviously I was around the same age as the protagonists when I first started reading this book. Uh, Alana was... 10 or 11 in the first book of the Song of the Lioness Quartet. Dane was obviously 13 in the first book of this series. Um, but now I'm 30, will be 31 this year. So I feel like I'm more able to relate to some of the older characters, which is interesting. Numer in the first of the Immortals books was said to be in his late 20s. So technically I'm older than him, which is interesting because it gives me a bit of perspective because obviously when you're young, you don't think of someone in their late 20s as being not that old. You tend to think of them as quite old and because and, your perception of age and time are a little bit skewed. Now being already past the age that he is, I go, oh, that's not very old at all. And um, sort of, yeah, it's quite a different point of view to have. Very interesting. Um, one thing I forgot to mention at the end of the last video is that I didn't read any more of The Mask of Mirrors last week which is a shame. I will have to get back to that very shortly. It's still on my shelf waiting for me. But the Tomorrow Pierce books have got me at the moment. I'm going to try and get through this quartet as quickly as possible. We'll see if I get onto Tokyo Ghoul this week. Uh, I'm not usually a huge fan of horror, which is why I was quite surprised that I liked the first volume of Tokyo Ghoul. But it also does mean that I have to be in a particular mindset to read it. I will hopefully also try and watch some more Bleach this week, which I didn't do last week, and give you a bit of a chat about that because that would be I think quite interesting. It will be spoiler based because I am far enough into Bleach in the early 90s of the 366 episodes I believe uh, so it's hard for me to talk about what's happening in what I'm watching without spoilers because we are through several arcs at this point and I mean what can you do? So that's the plan for this week. I'm kind of looking forward to it. Hopefully I will get a bit more reading done this week than last week because I got a little bit sidetracked by my art and making projects and once again I will leave the links to either the other channels or videos from the other channels, maybe both, the latest videos from the other channels and the channels themselves in the description below so that you can find them and enjoy the content. Good Wednesday morning. On Saturday I ended up finishing Wolf Speaker, which was really quite fun. It was quite unfamiliar to me considering I haven't read it in so long but I mean I remembered the overall plot points but yeah the individual little details because I've reread this book a lot less than I've read the other books in the series 
was a lot less familiar to me. And it was good fun. I'm not really sure what else to say about it. I haven't really figured out how to have spoilery discussions of these books that I've read so many times. Um, like I said in the last video, I've been rereading the Tomorrow's books since I was 11, which is very nearly 20 years. And on the whole, I think for the most part, I've read them at least once a year. So I've probably read all these books at least 20 times. They're sort of ingrained in my mind. So it's so familiar to me that it's hard to actually come up with thoughts on what I'm feeling. But since I finished Wolf Speaker, I have also started The Emperor Mage. And I'm oh, about a third of the way into it, a little less than a third of the way into it. And again, it's a really good book. I did have one surprise that completely threw me off. Was it at the start of the second one? Yeah, I probably mentioned it at the start of the last one. Is um, for some reason, reading all these Tomorrow Pierce books, I hadn't realised that Nemea had dark skin. But I mean, it makes sense with the country he comes from and stuff, but I don't know, hadn't occurred to me. So I'm trying to sort of read through it with a little bit more of an eye to the specific details so that I don't miss these things that apparently I've missed in 20 years worth of rereads. But it's going good so far. I am just up to the part where the peace talks have started. So basically the plot of this book is um, that a group of the Tortolans, including Alana, Nemea, Dane, and a few others, have gone to Kartak to meet with Emperor Ozon, who was most likely the person behind the Immortals being released and the pirate attacks and things like that that have happened the past few years, and was also behind the plot from the previous book. So the Tortolan delegation have come to make peace with Ozon. Dane has come along because the Emperor's birds are sick. I haven't been feeling in the mood to read very much the past few days. I've got a lot of other things going on, and in particular, I have a set of paints, jelly gouache, that I've ordered that I'm wanting to play with that will hopefully be here today or tomorrow, Saturday at the latest, I think, but they're already sort of not that far off according to the tracking data, but the tracking data hasn't updated since Tuesday at like half past 12 in the middle of the night type thing. So I'm just, you know, antsy and finding it hard to concentrate on the things that I want to concentrate on because I really love to play with these paints that I don't have yet. So in order to get myself actually reading a few more things, I decided to sort of set myself some half hour timers this morning and try and actually pick up things and read. Now, I did read Emperor Mage for a good half hour. I did pick up Tokyo Ghoul volume two and got a tiny bit further. And I still am struggling to get through this. I think because I'm expecting it to be creepy and to freak me out. And I don't do well with things that freak me out. So I'll have to see how I go with this. The first volume was actually really interesting and wasn't really creepy at all, which was why I picked it up and also the beautiful artwork on the front cover. Um, so honestly, I think I just need to suck it up because visual media don't freak me out as much as oh, by visual media i mean books don't freak me out as much as um movies and tv shows because we don't have sound because it's easier to put down in the middle those kind of things so generally not too bad but i mean it's still interesting i'm still enjoying what i am reading i just don't have the drive to read it the other thing i picked up this morning was the Mask of Mirrors, and I read a little bit more of this. Not much, again, I mean, probably less than 10 pages or something. That much is what I've read this morning. What page are we on? 185 from 171? Ah, nearly 15 pages, not too bad. Um, I'm really enjoying this still. It's actually been a real fun time to read this. And I'm looking forward to picking it up and reading more of this, much more than I am. Tokyo Ghoul at the moment. This was the buddy read on Murphy Napier's Patreon for June and I don't believe she's finished it either at this point but I'm still less than halfway through and the buddy read for July is Legends and Lattes which hopefully I will be able to purchase a copy of soon. I'm excited to get to that as well but 
yeah I just feel I've been getting into doing a bit more of my art and have therefore fallen off a little bit on the reading so that's all for this update hopefully I'll have another update soon I'm hoping to actually get a whole bunch more reading done maybe watch some episodes of Bleach I don't know just want my paints <laughs>
they no longer have their position on the council that runs the city and things are not going well for them. There is another figure in this story called the Rook, who is basically sort of a Robin Hood-like figure, except with a bit less of the stealing the wealth of the nobility. He is a said to be a commoner. Uh, the story's been around for hundreds of years. This Rook has been around for hundreds of years and um, basically protects the poor, fights the nobility, that kind of thing, and is somehow caught up in all this madness. This book is political intrigue and deception galore, and I adore it. It is one of the best things I think I have ever read. It is one of my new favourites, by far. Um, the gradual reveal of information throughout the book is really fascinating in terms of sort of how the plot plays out and how we're not in Ren's perspective the entire time. We do get to follow other people when things are happening when she's not there. But she's the one who is the focus of the story. She's the one who we get to see when she is without her mask. And I suppose it kind of plays into the idea of the gods of this world. They have two faces, the mask, or two sides, the mask and the face. The mask is sort of the negative and the deception of the god. The face is the, the truth and the real kind of thing. So we get to see a lot of everyone's masks, but with Ren we also get to see her face, who she is when she's not wearing what becomes several masks for different sort of situations. And I think one of the things that I find really interesting with that is that for a lot of the book you feel like because you've got these other perspectives you're kind of a few steps ahead of Ren in terms of figuring out what's going on. And I don't know if this is a spoiler or not, feel free to skip this a little bit if you are concerned that it might be, but I kept finding that we turn a corner and suddenly all this information that we thought we had ahead of Ren had caught up with us and we were on the same page as her and suddenly we were all wrong. And everything we thought was sort of playing out turned out to be incorrect, which was really fascinating. There are a couple of time skips that occur throughout the book, I think mostly to sort of skip over irrelevant details and to keep the story flowing. And it's kind of interesting to see how they work as well because there are things like there was an occasion where Ren was talking to someone and had arranged a meeting with someone quite high up in the sort of nobility as a opportunity to be seen with someone of importance around the city to gain some reputation and potentially to help someone else gain some reputation. And we see the arranging of the meeting, but we never actually see the meeting take place. It jumps to a later time. And in some ways I find it a little frustrating because this world is so fascinating that I just want to sink myself into it and understand absolutely anything and everything. Um, I came across this book as the Patreon Buddy Read for June on the Murphy Napier Patreon. and. Um, I did happen to flick through to the final thoughts. I, I need to set up my Discord so that I can, um, or not set up the notifications so that I will not go look at the final thoughts on a book that I haven't read, and I managed to come across a spoiler. Which did take a little bit of the intrigue away from the book because I had an idea that something that they were implying wasn't true already. Um, it turned out that the thing that I'd spoiled was actually in the last few pages of the book which, I mean, it took a little bit of the suspense out, but it was such a fascinating and gripping story anyway that it didn't really make a lot of difference for me. Um, the world itself is also incredibly rich and detailed and you step into it like a foreigner. They're not necessarily explaining everything to you all in one go. So you're trying to learn about all these people and their different places and the nobility and, and then the different cultures in the city and, and the different religions and the positions on the council. And even I feel like, right in the last sort of chapter of the book they're still explaining things about how the governing of this city works and how the the seats on the the, the Sinkarat, which is sort of the the governing council how they're appointed and things and i know it's the first book in a trilogy so it makes sense that they're still revealing information but even reading through the whole book i feel like i didn't absorb it all but it's been so fun as i've been going through to gradually understand a little bit more about certain things and how they work and sort of build up this idea in my mind of what things actually are and in some ways I prefer 
that to sitting there and having it all explained to me and understanding it. It's a little bit of a slow build, the first half of the book up to the end of that second section is a lot of sort of getting into the roles and understanding the people and beginning to sort of understand the inter relationships between different people and, and things that are going on. But it's worth the build and once it gets going there's so so much to keep you going. I definitely still don't understand everything about the world and the people and in some ways I want to reread the, re the book right away so that I can find out. But I have actually promised that my dad can borrow the book and read it so I can't. So that's a shame. But it's also it was a bit of a slog to get through the start but I think rereading it now I'd be trying to pull out all the little bits of information. I really actually want to pick up book two and start on that one which is The Liar's Knot which is very interesting. A knot in this world is kind of like the term for a, a street gang because they sort of bind themselves to each other with a knot, physical tied string type knot. So even just the title implies that perhaps Ren is getting a group of people on her side. Um, the last thought I have in this spoiler free section is that I kind of spent a lot of time a little, I get a little anxious about drama things, they make me a little bit uncomfortable and I spent a lot of the first half of the book especially kind of waiting for things to fall apart in a spectacular fashion, the sort of, I read a lot of fan fiction so there's sort of a lot of stuff in fan fiction where people will be lying about something and when it falls apart it just all goes to pieces immediately and then everyone hates each, each other and stuff and this was a little different because every time things began to sort of fall apart something else would pull it in a different direction and and I don't want to say too much because I don't want to spoil the book. So I think that's going to be the end of my spoiler free summary and I will put some timestamps in the description and hopefully sort of chapter this video so that you can skip through the spoilery section if you don't want to hear me ramble on about all the things that are driving me mad now that I've finished this first book. <sighs> Whoops, I meant to have the camera zoomed in for that last clip. Oh well, I'm not repeating it. So, spoilers. There's so much about this book that I adore and there's so many questions it's left me with. The first thing that kind of not frustrated me or disappointed me, but I loved Liato. He was gorgeous and I kind of wanted him to end up with Ren and then he died. So that's that. I mean it was kind of hinting that it was sort of leaning towards a love triangle and this is kind of amusing when they like set up the beginnings of what could be a love triangle and then you suddenly find that the person you like is dead. But <laughs> I... yeah. I, I love the way this book strings you along and thinks you know, or helps you sort of feel like you're a step of, ahead of Ren in figuring out who the Rook is and what's happening and then suddenly Ren feels the same as you and then the Rook's pulled out from under both of us and suddenly none of us, or neither of us know what's going on anymore. Um, the bit that was spoiled for me was actually the identity of the Rook which is revealed in the last few pages and I kind of want to Go back through and find all the hints about why Grey is the Rook and how that relates but I think one of the things that makes a lot more sense is the thing about the whole uh, where the Rook believes that or agrees that he's the one that killed Grey's brother because he's feeling that guilt of something has happened that you know presumably he was caught up in that caused his brother to die and he feels like he should bear the responsibility but oh my goodness, that twist at the end with Fargo being a lot more deceptive than <laughs> than I'd realised. Oh, I need to know more and I want Ren to be sort of more thoughtful and discerning and a lot more guarded and... Oh, I just, I need to know everything. I want, one of the big things that I want to know more about is the Rook, specifically sort of the mask and the outfit which the implication is at the end of the book that perhaps it's connected to is it Azarias's dream? I'm not going to flick through and find that am I? Um, yeah the I feel like the rook 
identity, the, the clothing is connected to Azarias' dream and perhaps contains the memories and the... Because they were talking about with the Vrizenians, and presumably only a Vrizenian could be a Rook, how when they die, a portion of their spirit is sent into Azarias' dream. The sort of ancestral stuff lives on kind of thing. And I'm wondering if that part is sort of imbued into the Rook's cloak, so the actual sort of memories and identity of the previous people that have been the Rook is kind of imbued into the cloak and or outfit and sort of is part of the power of the Rook. It sounds like the actual fighting, some of the actual fighting ability of the Rook is also imbued as in the magic that they talk about in the book, the imbuing, into the identity of the Rook as well, that he, part of the reason he's such a good fighter is because of that. But I also want to know how this relates to now the Rose Mask that Ren has, and whether that's creating a new identity like the Rook and how that's going to work together, and presumably how in the next book things are going to pull more to the Frizenian side of things, because we've had a lot of the Legante, the nobility, in this book, and Ren sort of trying to become one of them and identify with them, and I'm assuming that Ren potentially has a noble father. That is the implication of the book, but then again, obviously, they keep pulling the rug out from under us. So, yeah, she might have a, a noble father, and that would explain why she looks a bit legante, and potentially as well why her mum was cast out from her Rosinian family. But I kind of like the idea of Ren being pulled back into the the Rosinian life, the and maybe completely upending the nobility? And I absolutely adore the way that the sort of tarot aspect, the, what do they call it? I remember the word earlier and I've completely forgotten. The cards, the patterning, that's it. Uh, I love the way they've included the patterning, the sort of tarot connections there, and how Ren genuinely has magic through the patterning that is hopefully going to reveal some really interesting things to her and help her understand the world in ways that she wouldn't otherwise. Oh, it's it's beautiful. It's so good. I feel like the bits with the... I feel like the bits with the ash maybe felt a little frustrating in a way because I feel like they pulled us away from the the political intrigue and the, the, I suppose, the magic side of things. But at the same time, this world is so rich. I mean, between the, the Numenata, Numenatria, the imbuing, the patterning, the astrology, which are all seem to be different forms of magic and all work in different ways. And I need to know what's going on with Virgo and I need to know what's going on with Grey. And I think in some ways it would have been really cute if Leato had been the Rook because then it would have been a noble pretending to be a commoner with a commoner pretending to be a noble. But but I think also his death has pushed things in interesting ways but also it's taken away the only person that she's actually told the truth to apart from the Rook. And Ren doesn't know the identity of the Rook which is fascinating because there's that off-balance thing there. And Oh, there's so much going for it, and I just need to know more, so I'll be getting the next book as soon as possible. It's now Saturday, and I was about to edit the reading vlog when I realised that I forgot to film a clip yesterday. If I'm talking a little bit funny I went to the dentist this morning for some fillings and my face is still a bit numb over here. So ignoring that, the other book I finished yesterday is The Emperor Mage. I actually got through it in the end. So I don't know if I've talked a little bit about it already but The Emperor Mage is the third book in the Immortals Quartet and in this book we follow Dane and the Totolan delegacy as they travel to Kartak to negotiate with Emperor Ozorn, who they believe has been behind the attacks of immortals and raids of pirates that have been affecting Tortal for the past few years. 
Dane goes along not as an ambassador and part of the delegation specifically so much as a wild mage to look at the Empress birds who have been sick. And we're going to get a little bit into spoilers here because I feel that's probably the best way to talk about it. So if you want to skip I will try and leave again the time codes in the description, the chapters in the layout of the video so that you can skip this bit if you don't want to be spoiled for the video. So the main reason that Dane is there, as I said, is to help the um, Emperor's birds, who it turns out have been eating the enamel coating on the leading of the glass windows and have been taking in lead and poisoning themselves that way. And I think the thing that makes the story so interesting is that we're beginning to get into a bit more of Dane's heritage and she's beginning to discover that, like people keep kind of hinting at, because she's mentioned over and over that she doesn't know her father, but he is actually the god Wirin. I don't think... I think someone does specifically call her Wirin's daughter in this, but that's really the only indication that that's who her father is, but he's always been sort of... She's realising now that the man with the antlers that she keeps seeing in her dreams about her mother is actually her father. And um, that sort of explains why she's got so much wild magic. So, be not because she's the daughter of a god, but because I think we're leaning towards her finding more about the fact that she is a demigod. This book um, introduces the idea that she is suitable to be the vessel for a god to basically take action through, just like Alana was the goddess's vessel in some ways in the Song of the Lioness Quartet. Uh, in this book, the patron goddess of Kartak, the graveyard hag, who is essentially a minor deity elsewhere in the world, but in Kartak she has all her power, feels she's been neglected by the Emperor and he's basically been neglecting all the gods but she has taken particular offence to it and gifts Dane through the badger god that's been helping her the ability to raise the dead, to bring skeletons and tiger skin rugs and stuffed vultures to life which is very cool and I love the fact that we begin to see a bit more of how Dane and Nemer have gotten close to each other. They've known each other for several years now, they've been teacher and student, but clearly their bonds are a lot stronger than just teacher and student. And when they kill off Nemer, tell Dane that he's been executed, I love just seeing her fall to pieces and decide that absolute destruction is the best way to go. To take her revenge on these people that have taken so much from her country, so much from well, her new country, because she wasn't raised in Tortor, she was raised in Gala. And, um, who took her, her teacher and friend from her. It's a really good book. I am a very big fan of the Tomorrow Pierce books. This, The Emperor Mage, is my favourite, I believe, out of the four of the Immortals Quartet. I'd probably say The Emperor Mage, Wolf Speaker, Wild Magic, then the Realms of the Gods. I don't know what it is about that last one, but I think it just... We've spent so long fighting these battles along the people in Tortoise against these immortals that throwing Dane into the Divine, divine Realms as happens in the fourth book. Um, and separating her from the bulk of the action, even though it helps the story that way, it just feels like it doesn't have the same impact as the other ones do. But anyway, the Emperor Mage is a lovely book, I recommend you all read it. And that is all for this week's vlog. Thank you very much for watching. Um, please leave comments to let me know what you think of what I've been reading, what you've been reading, and if you have any recommendations for what else I should be reading, I'd love to hear from you guys. See you in next week's video.